Hey Alan, it's Brian. Just thought I'd take you through the basics of doing a little bit of cutting with your cutter. We had a great time. Appreciate borrowing it for a week. So I'm going to start out by just firing up the Silhouette Studio application. And I thought we'd pull down maybe a couple images off the web, grab a font, and put those together. And you know, just do a little uh, play with the cutter a little bit that way. So while we're waiting for that to load up, I'll go ahead and go over here to my email. There's let me get actually let me get this so it's not quite so big so you can see it better. There we go. Uh, let's see. Something like that. Okay. So you know there's our application and typically you're gonna get something off the web. And honestly, if you go down here to the little library thing and look at my library, let's see, I'm gonna turn the cutter on because otherwise you won't get to see the library. Here we go. I just turned it on, I've got it all connected. Hopefully it'll kind of pop up in a minute. Here we go. So if you go to the little default library, I don't know. It, to me, there's a couple cute things, but there's so much variety on the web. So Vika went and did some searching, and she found, let's see, she found some cute stuff that we wanted to do for a little project. So I'm just going to click on those. And these, of course, are all free downloads. Here's a little seahorse. And let's see, a little doily. And then here's an octopus. So, you know, just kind of some fun stuff. So what I'm going to do with all these is just uh, right click on it, save picture. And it's going to, you can kind of tell up here, it's going to put it in the default downloads directory. And that sounds good. So I'll just click save on this one. Got that one done, so I'll close it. Same thing, I'm just going to right click on this thing, save it. And that's my daisy doily. Again, it's going to go in downloads. Good. Uh, let's see. Close that one. We got that one. Here's some clip art and octopus anchor. Again, right click on it, save it in our downloads. Octopus anchor. Um, just for fun, how about if we grab a font? I just kind of picked something random. Um, how about sipping on sunshine? So we'll go download some sipping on sunshine, and hopefully that will do something useful in regards. To click on it. There we go. Save. We want to save this thing. Okay, and when it's all done, I like to open the folder. That's probably been my favorite thing. So if you notice, it downloads something to a .zip file, not quite the font itself. So I'm going to click on that open folder thing. It put it in downloads. Notice what we got. We got a little daisy doily. Here's the seahorse. Here's the octopus. Oh, you know what? The octopus is not so happy. I was not being careful. This is a PNG not good for cutting versus an SVG exactly what you want for cutting. So I'm going to go back and think her octopus at least a little bit I think, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this is something, and if you look, this is a compressed file. You can't use that directly, but what you can do is click on this little extract button here and just extract all and kind of, and what it's going to do is create another directory called Gaben or Gavin or whatever that is. So let's close this window. That's just kind of distracting. So now it's turned this, this file into a directory because these zip files are containers for other things. And it's got the outline font, a picture of it, PNGs are pictures, and then two true, true type font files. Sometimes you'll see open type font files. What you want to do is whenever you see a font file, you finally got it unzipped, got it like this, just double click on it, and then there's this nice little install button, and you install it. And it's going to ask me probably if I went through that. Nope, it just did it. Okay. So now I've got Gaben Italic, and I better go and do my Gaben Regular. So it's this kind of font. So I just put in, so that's an easy way to install a few more fonts. Once you've installed them, you don't need to keep the files around anymore. So just to be clean, I'm actually just going to go and uh, right click, delete these things. Here's delete. Good. I would delete that and delete that because I like to keep things cleaned up instead of having a million stuff just kind of lying around taking space. So I went and deleted both of those things because my font's installed and we should be good. It looks like for some reason on my site here, I thought I clicked, I clicked, I thought I clicked this, but I must have clicked that instead and I got the Gaben regular instead of sipping on sunshine. But that's okay. I just wanted the font just to play with. Now, one tricky thing after we've got our stuff, you know what? Let me look at that seahorse again. Or the, Octopus. I think this is the octopus. Ah, come on, octopus. Let's see. Like I said, this this it says SVG right down here at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to click on that, 
oh look, this is going to be better. I'm going to right click on this now, save as, and now notice I'm getting an SVG, not that PNG. That's what we really want. So I kind of made a mistake there earlier. And uh, we'll go look at that directory. Let's see. I'm going to go to minimize this. We'll just pull up, because I've got a file manager. Here we go. Here's a file manager. I'm up here in my downloads directory. And I've got two kinds of octopus anchors one PNG, bad stuff. I'm going to get rid of that. And the other one's the good stuff. So let's just delete this. Delete. Sorry, it's not. Okay. So now we've got three files, and we're kind of ready to cut it or ready to prepare it, but there's one slight thing. If you go and think, oh, I want to try out my new font and get everything ready, let's create ourselves a new document here. Here's a new document, and I'll pull up my font thing. I click here so I can create a font, and I'll say uh, hello, but that's kind of an ugly font, so I'll go and make this instead of Arial. Let's do that Gabin font, and what we're going to find out probably, let's see what happens here. Let's see, where is G? We've got Gabriola. And Gauji, but I don't see GAB a Gavin. The problem is I install the font after I open Silhouette Studio and it doesn't recheck the fonts. So I'm actually going to close it. I don't want to save that because I didn't really do anything. I want to close it and just reopen it and just remember to do that. If you ever put in a font, it's not going to know about it until you close and restart Silhouette. So hopefully Silhouette will start real soon now if I really double click it. I better double click it again. This time it should really get it. And we'll wait for that to come up. And if you notice, it's loading fonts. It was really quick, but right here it said loading fonts. That's when it looks at what your fonts are. So that's kind of the magic. Is like I said, when you've get, ever got a new font, you just got to put that in. I'll go create myself a new document and pick up my little font tool. The rest of the stuff you probably won't use. You know, what we do is just grab SVGs. The one thing we do use is that font thing because we would usually want to say something. I'm going to type in hello. I'm going to press shift and backspace for the same thing like wipe it with my mouse. And now hopefully we can find this wonderful Gavin font. Where is it? There. That's the one I downloaded. So we got hello, and I can either do it in italic or underline. Oh, I don't think I'm going to do that. How about if we just stick with the normal Gavin? Okay, so I've got kind of font cut, and I wanted to put those other things in. And for some reason, I've got some extra files down here. Here's the one I'm not using. I'm just going to close this because that's junk. Here's my files, this untitled 2. I'm going to go and do a file open because I want to pull in those SVGs. And right now, it opens the downloads. But in case you don't happen to be there, it's a long path because it would be nice if it were in somewhere like libraries. But downloads doesn't show up in your library. So... What you probably have to do if you ever get lost is go to your computer, with C colon, users, ln, downloads. So it's kind of a long path, but that's where all your downloads are going to show up. Hopefully, once you're kind of here, you'll be in pretty good shape and you won't have to navigate it too many times. But I'm going to pull in our little doily here. Oh, whatever. Double click on my doily and open that. And click. My mind's there. So there's my doily. Notice it put it in a different document. I got this one over here. I got my doily over here. I'm going to go just open. It's going to open. Here's another opening thing. It's, uh, there's my seahorse. I'm going to open my octopus anchor. So now I've got all three of these in. But the thing is, they're all in three different places, and I really want to cut them on one piece of fabric. So I'm just going to click on it and then right click and do a copy. And then I'll go over here to this one. This is the one where we kind of got stuff, and I'll just uh, right click paste it. So there's our octopus. So I'm going to actually go over here to my octopus and close it because I'm kind of done with that. I don't need to save that. There's nothing in here. Same thing. I'm just going to tap, click on my seahorse, right click copy, go in here, right click paste it in. I'm not too worried about where it ends up right now because we can always kind of like click and drag and move stuff around. We'll kind of arrange it and resize it in a minute. So let's see. We got our seahorse copied in. Nope. Don't need to save that. Uh, here's our cute little doily. Uh, click my right click copy and we'll put our doily in here. Right click paste it somewhere. You can also control V paste, whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to drag that a little bit just so I don't move quite as many. And let's close the doily. Okay, so now I've got you know, a cute little file. I'm like, oh, I'd like to cut this on some kind of fabric. First question is, how big is your fabric? Over here, there's this design page settings. And one of the really useful things is you can pick your cutting mat. We're using that one that you gave me. 
and this reveal lets you kind of fade in that grid underneath it and that is really useful because that's a 12 by 12 grid and you can literally just count on the thing what size your fabric is and where it's going to fit. I'm going to just pretend I've got a 9 by 9 piece of fabric or paper or vinyl, whatever. i got a 9 by 9 thing there. So obviously I'm going to have to do a little bit of resizing. So I'm just going to grab corners here and just kind of see what I can fit in. I'll see if I can... I don't want to put things right next to the edge because I may not be able to get it all exactly lined up. And uh, what I might do with this seahorse, every now and then it gets in this weird mode, so I just click out here and click back in and, and get my resizer. So, you know what, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit, but also I'm going to grab this and start spinning it. And I'm going to, while I'm spinning it, I'm going to press shift and it gets kind of a little, it snaps, see that little snap there? Uh, I'm going to let go of the mouse button before I let go of the shift. And now I'm wondering, <clears throat> wondering what the best way to arrange it. Maybe I can, I'll kind of stick my seahorse up here, my anchor underneath. I think that's 9 by 9, right? That's 9, 10, 11. So that would fit. <clears throat> Maybe I'll pretend I got a 9 by 12. But hopefully you see the, the idea that you know I can kind of <coughs> arrange stuff a little bit and set it up so we should be in good shape. Now let's say we're kind of arranged in, in good shape and I'm ready to go and cut some stuff. So I'm going to click on the little cutting thing. Let's stop. Uh, sorry, this is my cutting thing. Here's my cutting thing. And by default, it's not going to cut everything. You kind of have to tell it what you want to cut. Hello is cutting and my octopus is cutting so I'm going to click over here and say for my doily I want to cut the edge it's almost always what you want you like you know perforate stuff and do cute stuff almost always cut edge if you don't if you want to do things in like three different colors you can actually pick something and say don't cut that so you know that way you can have the same design and load it three different times or three different fabrics or whatever but usually you're just going to do cut edge I'll click on my seahorse we want to cut that edge so at this point I've got red lines around everything you can see uh, this is in like super cut mode. Maybe they just do cut edge. So at this point, everything is kind of set up and I'm ready to cut, except I actually need to pick what I'm cutting on. And here's where you get to kind of play a little bit. Um, and, you know, there's a list of things that you can look at, like whatever this, you know, adhesive back cardstock. I don't know. Um, how about glitter cardstock? Because that sounds really pretty. Okay, so we're going to cut on glitter cardstock. And it says that to cut, I need to click my blade to six, and it's already got kind of speed thickness and all. Hopefully, it just works, and I'm not Google around and try. But before you do anything, there's this really neat little test cut thing. You click on that, assuming your silhouette's connected and it's ready to go, and it and it cuts a little square with a triangle inside it, uh, wherever your cutter blade is. There's little arrow keys on the cameo itself, and you can press the arrow keys and move the head around until you have a little scrap play or a blank face and then click the test cut button and then it'll cut it. Just beware after you've driven around with those cursor keys, you probably want to eject the thing and reload it because when you click cut it's not going to know where the blade is and do weird stuff. You know, think the, uh, it'll not know where home is. So you want to eject it and reload it. When you're ready to cut, you go over here, send the silhouette, and <laughs> here's a fun thing. Every now and then I plug in the cable and it's like I can't find your cameo and I don't know what you're talking about. So I clicked that little X just to get rid of this one. It found this one, and if it doesn't find it, just unplug and replug a couple, sometimes three times, and you'll see it finally make a happy boop boop and come up and, I don't know, just kind of don't give up. Just unplug and replug until it sort of shows up and click on X on the stuff that's not ready. And then you click Start and enjoy the, enjoy the show because it will cut away and do something great for you. A couple things just to note in terms of navigating and where I was. Um, this is the place. The places where I usually go is this design page settings because I, you know, link with my grid the view ability. Um, I go to this because you need to pick the cut. And every now and then it does something kind of weird and annoying. Remember, there used to be that nice test cut symbol, and now it's gone. It's because the software hates you. I found if you click on this again, even though it's already selected, it'll tell you what you're cutting and it'll give you the test cut thing back. But you have to re-click on whatever thing it is. You're cutting and so that's a minor annoyance and like I said the other um, besides that the other thing is right here we actually do the cut and just plug and unplug hopefully that's been helpful I'd love to see the cool stuff you come up with and cut and um, hope it's been helpful